Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage and the XM. It's really nice to see how many of you are agreeing with me that this is a really, really cool and special car. I was expecting it to divide the masses a bit more because this car has been worth nothing for a lot of years and still are not worth that much, but it's on the rise. It's a special design. It's one of those that needs time to, to cure, a bit like fine wine. I think it's a proper cool, cool classic car now. I really like it. This video is going to be about the startup of the engine, but a quick disclaimer, this video will not be starting the engine or attempting to start the engine at all. That will be later on together with Bielkluben podcast and they would like to be here when the car actually fires up. What I'm going to do today is to do some some testing and some preparation for the first startup of this engine in 20 years, I think. Oil change, coolant change, making sure that the engine is not stuck. I would like to get rid of all the old fuel and fill in some new fuel. And I would like to spin the engine over without any spark plugs, if it's not stuck, to make sure that it's producing oil pressure. So if you are expecting a roar from this engine, then I wouldn't really watch this video. I would wait for the next one. And to be honest, it could take some time before that comes out. But if you're into startup of old engines, I think this video is going to be rather interesting. And I, for one, love this part of a restoration or revival, as I call them, because this is, it's hard to describe, but it feels a bit like stepping back in time somewhat. For instance, just putting power onto this car and watching all of the electrical equipment come to life. It just feels like you're back at 2000, it must have been, that it was parked. That feeling of something sleeping for so many years and then suddenly waking up, it's an amazing feeling and more so on the engine because this engine has not made a sound. It has been completely dead silent for 20 years. and. Uh, it could keep on being completely silent. We'll see about that. It could be stuck. It could be wrecked. It could be so much stuff wrong with this engine. It is not known to be a very reliable engine and it's French and uh, there's a lot of stuff against it. But I am full of optimism on this one. I gotta say. The first thing that I'm going to do is to remove the spark plugs. Got a bit of oil down there, so it could be leaking from the valve cover gasket on at least one of them. I see why people say that this hard engine is hard to work on. This is not that bad, but over there. <laughs> That's one spark plug out. Pretty cool looking spark plugs. <laughs> this was the oily one. I don't think I will have to, to loop up that cylinder now. <laughs> it will be, it will have a lot of oil down there now. I think it's because of the seal down there around. The spark plug hole is uh, not good on the valve cover and therefore it will soak the spark plug in oil. So I'm going to remove them up there as well, and then take you back. I got all the spark plugs out now. The front end, I showed you that. That was pretty easy. The back end, especially the, the last cylinder back here, is extremely difficult to get at. And I heard that if you drop your socket down there, it will be very difficult and take a long time using this magnet tool to fish it out. <laughs> I've heard. I want to show you one thing about the spark plugs. I am not much into reading spark plugs, but it will tell you something. And there is one of them that is looking a little bit out of place. Here I have them placed and I have placed them in the order that I took them out so I can keep track of which cylinder looks, uh, if any of the cylinders look weird. 
This one was the very oily one, so we have a leaking seal around this one. Uh, it doesn't seem to be bad on the other side, so maybe we don't have to change the valve cover gasket on the back side of the engine over there, because that will be a big job, because I will have to remove the, the air compressor and uh, the air conditioning compressor and stuff like that. So the front one looks pretty easy. So if, it's, so the, if the problem is only there, then no big deal. You could also just ignore it. Uh, it's not my car. I will have to ask the owner. But other than the oily thing, all the spark plugs look black. You would like a bit not nutty color. This looks like it might have been started cold a couple of times with a bit of choke. It's the same on this one and on this one, but the middle one is suddenly a completely different color. It looks to be running lean on this cylinder. Um, so that is a bit worrying. We'll have to investigate a bit further before we can say anything really clever about that. But it's worth noting that maybe we have an issue with cylinder number two on the back side. And then I'm going to add some oil down each bore. This one is not necessary because it's already oily, but I'm going to do it anyway. This is to avoid the pistons and more importantly the piston rings in uh, scoring up the inside of the cylinders once they start move for the first time in 20 years because they could be stuck and they could be there could be a lot of things wrong with them that could score it. So to give them the best chance, I'm gonna oil them up a little bit and let it stand for a while. If the engine even turns over, let's find out later. So next up, I want to turn the engine over, hopefully. I, would, I want to do that on the crank pulley. I would like to turn it at least twice because then I know all the cams and all that has been wound one revolution. I, I think the easiest way to do that would be to remove the tire then I think I can get to the crankshaft and then turn it on the, uh, on the pulley down there. But the car is incredibly low. I wanted to, I want to move it up a, a little bit to, uh, to take the tire off and put it on an axle stand and all that. So what I'm going to try now is to raise the car up using the hydraulic system. That will tell me if it works. It could be a complete failure because one of the lines could be burst. It could have a massive leak. Something else could be wrong, but I'm going to try that. But it's not possible to just run the pump by itself because it runs from a belt from the camshaft on the rear bank. Uh, the engine is not running, so we can make a turn with that. But what I'm going to do is to remove the belt and try something else. If someone told you that the Citroen XM is hard to work on, you shouldn't believe them. It's no problem, this. It's amazing how fiddly everything seems to be so far. It's not so far, at least, difficult, but it's fiddly. Right now I'm just trying to undo the tension on the belt for the hydraulic pump, and it's just in the really hard position. It wouldn't be that bad if it was a normal bolt, but it's an Allen head, which makes it quite difficult to get at. And uh, dropping the tool will end up costing you a, a lot of time because it's so difficult to find stuff. And no, it doesn't just drop to the ground. There is too much stuff in the way down there. I have my mag magnetic tool at the ready and it's going to be used a lot on this one, I think. Oh, I got it loose now. So the struggle on this engine is very real. Um, I have used, I think, an hour to remove the belt off of the hydraulic pump. <laughs> it's so difficult to get to the fasteners back there. Incredibly difficult, actually. Um, and it's actually quite fun because I have to be creative. But what I want to do now is to put this around, around the pump down there. And then, and then we have the pulley loop going up here. And then I'm gonna take a drill, put it into here, 
and spin it and hopefully create some pressure. I'm going to put some safety equipment on because there is a possibility that something will burst. I'm also going to put a carpet over the spheres. I have, I really don't think anything will happen, but in theory it could. Uh, having a carpet over it will, will protect me from shrapnel. Um, if they were looking extremely rusty, I would be more worried, but it, it's always a wise thing to be a bit careful. I checked the LH, LHM reservoir, it's full. So I think by spinning that we could build pressure and get the, uh, the car to rise up. Okay, so my experiment with the uh, with the drill doesn't work, or actually it does, but I cannot apply enough pressure to keep the belt from from slipping. To begin with, there were no pressure, when, but when pressure arrived at the pump, it has become pretty difficult to turn. Not difficult, but too difficult to really spin with the uh, with the drill. Um, the positive thing is that I can feel it's building pressure. I can actually feel it by taking a hold of the steering wheel and turn it a little bit with the ignition on. I can feel the, that the assistance is back on just a little bit. It will disappear pretty quickly because it's just a little pressure. And I think the system is supposed to prior, prioritize the steering and the brakes before the suspension. Would That would make sense at least. So I think it will take a long time before the pressure actually rises the car up. But really, it's not the hydraulic system that is the most important thing right now. It is the engine. So I'm going to stop focusing on the hydraulic system for now. The belt is off at the moment. So if I try to start the engine, I won't build pressure. But now I want to take off the wheel and try to turn the crank. That's some rusty brakes in here. Also, I can see a cut wire. Oh, I think that's for the uh, wear indicator, so that's not a big deal. I thought it was the ABS, but uh, I think the Beel Club is going to be prepared to spend some money on, but it's not stuck. Ah, I know why it's not stuck. <laughs> It's not stuck because there are no brake shoes in the brakes. <laughs> this is actually pretty nice to see because this tells me that maybe someone parked this car up, knew what they were doing because it's a good idea to remove them. But it's a good idea to ride it on a node inside the car because if you push the brakes, then all hell breaks loose. But um, it's, it's pretty nice to not put them in because they will just seize to the, cali or to the disc. But it's important to not touch the brakes on this car from now on. <laughs> Otherwise it will just pop out the piston, of course. It's not looking that bad in here, but there is a lot of plastic. Now that's actually metal in there. It's looking to be in rather good condition, actually. At first glance, at least. What I want to do is to remove this plastic. That should give me access to the crankshaft pulley. So there we go, now we have access to the crankshaft. What I want to do is to turn the engine over twice, because if I only turn it around once, then the valve train will only be turned half the way. And I want to turn it twice to make sure that everything has moved, that all the valves has moved, because if one of them are stuck for some reason, it could hit the pistons. So therefore I'm going to turn it twice to make sure that there is nothing that obstructs it. <laughs> Let's cross our fingers that it is possible to do. We have no spark plugs in there, so it shouldn't be too hard to do. Oh, but it is actually pretty stiff. Ah, oh, it's in gear, by the way. <laughs> Just a second. Let's try. Oh yeah, 
Yes, it's moving. It's moving. Ah, oh, yes, that's one. That's oh, and it's really smooth. Also, there is no issues with this. How nice is that? Woo! Yes. Brilliant news about the engine not being stuck. That's really nice. To be honest, I was a bit surprised that the guys didn't check that out, but it is a bit difficult to do. Of course, you can always, if you can't get to the pulley, put it into gear and push it. That will show you if the engine is stuck or not. Uh, but this one is just fine. But next thing I would like to do is to, to take out the oil because these engines seem to suffer from some camshaft problems. I'm not sure that this one is affected by it because it was corrected by some different kind of cam gear or camshaft, I'm unsure. But if the engine oil is full of glitter, then we have a problem. Apparently the camshaft or the rocker gear, don't quote me on that, will clog up the oilways and then the engine will lose oil pressure and grenade itself. So I need to check that if the oil is nice and clear, then no problem. Then I won't go any further with that because then I'm sure that the camshafts are all right. So that's one thing. I would also like to get fresh oil on this engine before I fire it up because it's a shame to fire up an engine with the old engine oil, especially this old. I've done that a lot of times actually. I'm not that worried about it, but this is a really rare engine. So I would like to give it the best chance. Of course, it's best to change oil on a hot engine. That's not going to happen on this one because I can't get it hot without starting it. And the last thing, and that's a bit of a worry, is that when I press the coolant hoses up here at least, they are completely empty. I could try to lower down. It's also completely empty down there. So either someone has drained the coolant system before putting it in storage. I really don't see why you would want to do that. Maybe it's just leaking from somewhere low. But you would notice that. But of course it has been standing there for 20 years. So maybe there was a bucket under it for a while and then uh, they forgot about it. But one thing that is also a possibility is the Solana head gasket. If one of those, if that is leaking, it would leak coolant down the boss and into the engine oil and into the camshaft. And it's really not good for the engine. But being that the coolant is not even down here below the Solana heads, tells me um, that there is a possibility that the Solana walls are cracked or as far as I know these engines got wet liners uh, which means that the bars are loosely put into the block with a gasket underneath. Apparently it's a weakness on these engines. If that gasket is gone, rusted away because of bad coolant for instance, it will leak all the coolant into the oil. If that's the case, then this engine will not, <laughs> it will need a rebuild. That's the, that's the, but let's just hope it's a leak. Let's try to take the oil out. Oh, there's not a lot of room down here because of this really low engine. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no. Is that oil? I don't think it's oil. It would be incredibly thin if this was oil. Oh no, this engine is full of water. No, 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 no. That would be the thinnest oil I have ever seen if it's, if it's oil, it's just not oil. It's just not oil. Ah, the level was right on the dipstick. So I was actually not expecting this. I'm gonna take the drain bolt out completely and see what comes out. Okay, I think it's oil now, but the first stuff that came out was water. 
but it wasn't a lot. Where would that water come from? I need to do a, a pressure test on the coolant system after this. But I'm not condemning the engine completely because this means that the camshaft at least was not under water, it was under oil. Oil will be on top of water, so water will come out as the first thing. It was a lot of water coming out to begin with, but now it is oil. Hmm. Okay, so I'm conflicted now because this oil looks just fine. There's no glitter in it. It's not like the Milky Way. It's kind of thin. But there was water in this engine and I just don't know how much or where it came from. But I need to pressurize or at least fill the coolant system with water to begin with and then pressurize it to find out what's going on here anywhere. Like that. Leak, it's leaking from two places, but no, we're near any engine. It's leaking from up here. It's not coming from the engine, but it's coming from this side and this side of the radiator. The radiator is toast. Let me show you. It's coming out right, it's coming out right there from somewhere around this area underneath. It's just water, by the way, but it's the radiator, all the connections at the radiator that's leaking that. So I've refitted the drain plug and uh, yes, I have bought a new oil filter and yes, I am going to change that, but I cannot really see it anywhere. And I'm pretty sure it would be much easier to, uh, to change from underneath. So I'm going to wait with that until the car has fired up, if that happens. And um, do it on the lift. Another thing is that the leak down there is a good thing. Well, it's not a good thing, but it's a good thing because that's the reason why all the coolant is missing because it, it seems to be the lowest point in the entire coolant system down there. So I am no longer thinking that the engine is getting water into the engine. Uh, I just think that the coolant system is leaking. But I still am a bit puzzled about that water that came out of there. It's hard to say, but maybe it was a about 60 milliliters or something like that. So not a lot, but still some and a bit weird, but maybe it's just condensation. Maybe the owner cold started it a lot of time to make sure that it didn't seize up or something like that. That will make a lot of condense, condensation inside an engine. And let's just hope. <laughs> yeah, so that is enough to do the first attempt at cranking this engine. But before doing that, I need to figure out which one of the relays are the fuel relay. They all seem to click, so it's just a matter of taking one out of a time and see when the fuel pump stops. I could have checked a wiring diagram for this. Ah, there we go. The fuel pump is no longer priming. So this is for the fuel pump. That's good because we can use this to purge the rest of the fuel a little bit later on. But right now it's time to see if the engine cranks over because maybe the starter engine is toast on this one. I was told that could be the case on it. So I don't know if it's a problem that I don't have the code or haven't pressed the code in at least yet. I have gotten a lot of codes actually from uh, the guys who owned it before. They don't know which one is the right one, but we can try that later. But if it's necessary to pun punch in the code to make the starter actually engage, I don't know. Because maybe it's just the ignition that it controls. But let's try for the first time in 20 years to see if the engine turns over. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Ah, uh, that sounds just fine. So the car spins over freely. That's nice. I'm a bit surprised that that it actually did that because one thing is that I was told that the starter engine most likely was uh, not working on this one. It doesn't seem to be a problem. The other thing is that 
I don't have I have not pressed in any key in that keypad. So maybe the keypad only controls the ignition, uh, the uh, the spark, the actual spark, or maybe it's actually disabled. It's very likely that it is already disabled because I think it's a pretty annoying thing to be honest. Um, now that it spins, I have actually fitted the belt for the hydraulic pump again because I tried to make that. I tried to make pressure with it with my drill bit. But when pressure rised, I couldn't really spin it. It just slipped on the uh, on the drill. Now I should be able to do it with the starter engine. Not only that, by turning the engine over on the starter without the spark plugs and all that, I will pump some fresh oil through the system. So even though it's going to be slightly hard on the battery and on the starter engine, it's going to be good for the engine. And also I will I will be able to know if the hydraulic system actually works. So let's fit the tire spin it maybe 10 seconds at a time then a short break to not overheat anything and then again until hopefully the car rises up nothing has happened in the suspension compartment i might add because i want to show you something really cool because something has happened in here the De the deravi steering <laughs> take a look at this Ignition on. I'm gonna turn it. Can you see the slop that I was talking about earlier in the steering is gone. And when I turn it, it self sensors. So something has started to work. Let's crank it some more and see if anything else happens. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, the engine is not stuck, the starter motor is working, but I need to fix this leak to be able to get the car out of here when I get it started. So in the next video I will have to try to raise up the rear and find out what's leaking and make a and make a quick fix on that so we can it's the only it's the only place that I can see it leak. So I think if I fix that leak, it should rise up. So in the next video I will start to fix that and most likely also get rid of all the old fuel in this engine. But a lot of progress is made. The engine is not stuck. The coolant seems to be disappearing from a broken radiator and not into the engine. And uh, there is no glitter in the oil, so I don't think it has problems with the camshaft. All is good in XM country at the moment. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.